Okay, hello everyone. Um, I tried some colors on this eight by eight inch canvas. I wanted to make a tree similar to the one that I did in this video. I'll put a link right there. Um, I had done this tree in blue, purples, and grays, and violets, and I really, really loved it. And lately, I've been getting into orange. I'm exploring colors that I don't like very much. I don't like orange very much, so I'm trying to use it a lot more to see what it is I don't like about orange. And actually, I do like orange, now that I'm using it more. So, since this worked out so well, I really like the way this one worked out. And since it did, I decided I was going to try to do it on a big 16 by 20, um, 20 inch gallery wrapped canvas. So this is one of the deep sided ones. It's already been taped off on the back. It's got some push pins in it and I've already painted my sides ahead of time where I want the um, landscape and the sky to separate just to make sure that I have the sides covered with color. So, for this painting, I used a multitude of colors. I used some dioxazine purple, an orange blend that I made myself. So this is just yellow and um, primary yellow and primary red mixed together to make um, this orange. Then I have a couple of magentas that are also colors that I've mixed. I think this one might be light magenta, and that's Master's Touch. And um, this one might be light magenta with just a little bit of white in it, so I had a lighter color. And then for the tree, well, these are tree colors also. For the landscape, I used dioxazine purple, quinacridone magenta, and a little bit of white. So that was for the landscape here, and I'm not sure I'm going to include the quinacridone magenta on the big canvas. And then for the treetop, for the foliage, I used um, those same colors, dioxazine purple, quinacridone magenta, and then I included some fluorescent pink and neon violet, some gold, and a little bit I think that's it yeah and then I use gold and violet for the tree trunk so I'm gonna mix all these up because these are pretty thick the ones that I have in my um, bottles are usually my three to one ratio so three parts of my pouring medium to one part paint so I need to thin these out a little bit so that I'll be able to blow them out with the hair dryer because this is technically a Dutch pour blowout sort of thing that makes the that ends up making the foliage look that way. So I'm going to get these mixed up and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Mixed all my colors with a little bit of water <clears throat> to thin them out so that I can blow them around the canvas, the leaves, with the blow dryer. So there, pretty thin. This one might be a little thick, actually. I think I'm gonna add just a few more drops of water to this quinacridone magenta. I want them to be thin enough that when I lay them down on the canvas, I can blow them out pretty easily and they, that they blend and overlap really well. So when I blow them out, I'm gonna start on the edges of my canvas because I want each layer to overlap the one above it so that it looks like foliage, like tree leaves, you know, kind of blooming out like this so that the tree, see, I blew out this outer edge and then I came back in and blew out another layer and I just kept doing that until I got to the center and that way they look overlapped from the inside out. We're gonna try and do that on this big canvas today. So I'm gonna put down orange 
in here. And then I'm gonna use a palette knife. I'm gonna put a little bit of white in it somewhere around this area because I want this to be lighter and this part of it to be a little bit darker. On this last canvas, I used black with the orange at the top and it kind of made a greenish color right here, so I'm not really a fan of that. So I'm gonna try to use a little bit of quinacridone magenta at the top to darken the top of the sky and then white right here with the orange. So I'm gonna lay down orange across this entire top. I'm gonna put white right here in the middle, this middle third section, and then I'll put some quinacridone magenta up here and then I will use a palette knife to wipe over those and blend all the colors together. When I'm done with that, I'll put down violet at the bottom and I may use a little bit of quinacridone magenta, I'm not sure yet, and some white and I'll blow that out down here to make the land in our landscape. So, let me grab a palette knife really quick. This is a pretty big canvas, so I'm gonna use my big palette knife to blend my colors. I think I am going to do quadacridone magenta up here. Wherever it went. I'm just going to take my palette knife and just blend these colors together on the canvas because I want the sky to be a little bit streaky. Now we'll work on the ground covering. We don't want any orange down here, so I'm just gonna wipe a little bit of this off and coat the canvas. So putting down white between the orange and the dioxazine purple. I think for this one, I am just going to use purple at the bottom. I'm going to use a thicker white to mix it in with my dioxazine purple. I keep wanting to call it violet, but it, this is dioxazine purple that I'm using at the bottom. Okay, I want that to be dark. Okay, this one I'm gonna blow out and blow it up into the sky. I'm using my hair dryer on high because I don't want to have to use a bunch of paint. I'm trying to just scrub it around. Okay, and that was pretty good. Start, just touching the sides to make sure that I have all of my ground cover all the way around the canvas. I'm just tapping the paint because I don't really want it to be one solid color. I want it to sort of resemble the ground the way that it looks splotchy and a bunch of different colors and shapes and so I'm tapping instead of rubbing my finger along it I just want it to blend with what's on top okay that looks okay 
I'm gonna add some white and blow it out with a straw a little bit because there's some spots. Torch some air, but there's some spots down here that I kinda wanna make stand out a little bit more. Just trying to fill in any gaps that I see right along here where there might be any orange or tree trunk is going to be like right here. The foliage will come out up here. So all right, I think we're good to go. Let's start laying the tree down. We'll start with the um, foliage and the branches. So I start laying down the colors at the top. I start with the darkest colors first. I'm going to do dioxazine purple right up the middle. These are basically where, if you think of a tree and where the limbs go, this is kind of where I'm laying out my colors. So the top of the tree is where I'll end up putting my lighter colors because that's where the light comes from. Okay, so I start with a dark color and then I go to my next darkest color. So that was dioxazine purple. This is quadrachidone magenta. And I'm only gonna, only gonna put it if you think about where the sun hits a tree, most of the light is on the top and the outside of the tree. So I'm putting my dark color, this main dark color, all throughout the tree, but I'll put the highlights on the outside and I'll put the lower lighted colors, the darker colors, towards the middle. So this quinacridone magenta, I'm just gonna put like halfway up the dioxazine purple. Okay, so there's our quinacridone magenta. I did save a little bit of this magenta I thought that I might use, but I'm not positive yet. I think I'm just gonna put a touch of it, like right here to kind of marry the um, darker magenta and purple together. Okay, so next I'm going to put on my Neon Violet. And then over that, fluorescent pink. Then I'm going to add a little bit of gold. Okay, I think this is looking pretty good. Torching for air every once in a while. Now, to make my um, Fluorescent pink and neon violet stand out because they are transparent colors. I'm going to drop a couple 
of drops of white in there. I think we're ready to blow this out. So I'm gonna use my hair dryer on low and with the cold shot button in so that there's no heat coming out, it's just cold air. Okay, here we go. One more thing, starting at the edges, I'm gonna blow the edges out first and then I'll come in and blow everything out towards the edge. I think I'm going to move my hair dryer up to high. I don't feel like I have enough paint. See if we can move it around more that way. Well, I ended up having to put the hair dryer on high because I waited and fiddled around too long and my paint was starting to dry on this side, so I needed a little more force to push it around, but I don't know if it churned up the orange a little too much for me or not, but I think it's going to be okay. So now we'll work on the tree trunk. In the trunk, I want to be gold and dioxazine purple. So I'm just going to get a palette knife. I'm gonna grab a bigger, well small, but the big of the small ones. And then also a smaller one because I'm gonna use this one to make my branches up in the foliage. <clears throat> okay, so I want the trunk to be about that wide. I'm just gonna take my palette knife and kind of draw it out in the paint just to give me a guide And then I just blow it out. Okay, so that's the beginnings of the tree trunk. Then you just take your palette knife and kind of pull it out to the sides to make your roots and blend any parts in here that you want to be blended that don't look quite like a tree to you. And take a little bit of that gold and go just right up into your foliage. I'm 
trying to marry the tree to work on the branches. So for the branches, I'll just take this gold, one that I've already mixed up, and my small palette knife. I'll just put a little bit, a bit of gold, that's really a lot actually, like maybe this much or less gold on. And I'll decide where I want a tree limb. And I'll just go in with the gold and drop it and drag it. So I'll let it fall off the end of my palette knife, got a little hair right there, into the paint, and then I'll drag that little puddle of paint that I just put in there out into a limb, like this. Okay, so I want a limb right here. So I'm gonna let the paint fall off my knife a little bit, and then I'll start dragging it slowly. So that the rest of the paint that's on your palette knife gets pulled into the paint. So there's one limb and then I'll come back on the other end of it and just pull it out in a different direction to make it look more like a limb. Let me do a few of those and then I'll be back to show you guys what this looks like on the other side. Okay, here she is, guys. Looks pretty nice. I put some little swirlies in the trunk. Right there. I can't wait to see how this dries. The sky is usually a lot darker when it dries, so. I'm excited, and then also the um, fluorescent pink and neon violet will be darker when it dries. Oh, here's my tree, you guys. If you haven't um, tried anything like this, definitely try it. It is fun. You just need your paint to be at a Dutch pour consistency, so you need it to be, you know, kind of thin. Like um, you could do my pouring medium and paint three to one. And then I would add maybe like 
a teaspoon to two teaspoons of water for like a five ounce cup maybe to make it pretty thin you want it to be where it just flows right back into the cup and it doesn't leave any sort of a trace on the surface no mound on a mound no little mound it just flows right back in to itself so yeah you should try this and post pictures in my comments because I would love to see your version of a tree and um, yeah I would just love to see it I would just love to see what you guys do so please comment post any pics if you do try to make this I would love to see that and be sure and hit the like button be sure and subscribe if you haven't done that already. I would love to have you join my family. And um, share this video so that others can learn how to make it. I've had a lot of people ask me how I do these. So, I thought I'd make a video to show you guys so that you can try yourself. And um, I'm really digging this orange, by the way. So, yet we're going to have a lot more experimentation with orange, I think. I did not even know I liked this color. But, okay, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for being here with me. Bye-bye.